guys welcome back now your boy with this adam's link i hope you guys are doing okay happy weekend and uh, please try as much as possible to like this video comment share it on ocean new platform follow me on instagram twitter facebook adam's link me and make sure to subscribe and click that bell notification to get updates anytime any day i upload and meanwhile guys uh check out my other channel ninja boy i have a lot of great content there that i think you guys will really really love and uh, we already know we are in Nigeria, and I know most of you are already tired listening to Nigerian news. I know most of you are tired listening to Nigerian news because we keep talking about one challenges every day. We keep talking about corruption, security challenges, every day kidnapping, every day, and it seems like nothing, nothing is changing. Well, guys, that doesn't mean we won't still be talking about it because we cannot just fold our eye, fold our hands and uh, just look the other way and just watching the country. I must talk, you know, it's depressing. I'm, I'm already depressed talking about Nigerian news. I'm already depressed, afraid and angry talking about Nigerian news, honestly. But I just have to still talk. And uh, yesterday, you already know, on Thursday, uh, our president, Mohamed Bouhari, came out to say, there's no kind of, it's not going to issue any kind of uh, amnesty to kidnappers, to band the, to, to, to bandits and to terrorists. Because you know this uh, Sheikh Kumi has been trying to intervene between the bandits and the government, you know, trying to talk to them to slow down and is encouraging peace. But, well, on Thursday, this is what Wari said. He said uh, at this time, we are confronted in various dimensions of security challenge that continue to slow down the emancipation of our people for poverty and economic deprivation. The government shall continue to deal with its suggestive bandits, kidnappers, and other criminals who constitute, who constitute the threat to innocent citizens across the country. Criminals, criminals are criminals and should be dealt with accordingly. Without resorting to ethnic profiling, I have already taxed the new service chief to devise new strategy that we end this ugly situation where the lives of our people continues to be threatened by hoodlums, by hoodlums and criminals. So he said there is no kind of negotiation, there is no any kind of uh, settlement to bandits. But it seems like uh, the government will say this and they, in, in the corner they are doing a different thing. Well, surprisingly, after Buhari made this clear, yesterday or Friday in Zamfara, 317 students were kidnapped. 317 students, guys, were kidnapped yesterday. <laughs> like, everybody was surprised. Like, okay. What has uh, Gumi been doing? Gumi, who is uh, trying to intervene between the government, what has he been doing? They say uh, gunmen from Zafara school adopted about 300 female students. Female students, not men, no female, all female. Gunmen has kidnapped over 300 school girls at the government girls' schools, secondary school, Jagadigbi, Jagigbi in the Talata. Mafara local government of Zafara state. So, bro, I saw the chat for us to be updated. A total of 1,157 students has been kidnapped in seven years. 276 were the cheaper guests during the Gulag Jonathan uh, era. Then in February 2018, 113 were kidnapped in Yombe. December 11, 2020, 244 kidnapped in Castina. December 20th, 2020, 80 at Castina State. February 17, 2021, 27 at Niger State. Then February 26, 2021, 317 in Zafara State. You see and uh this has made a lot of people be like man what is this man doing now what is the president doing meanwhile president immediately came out to issue a statement concerning this but uh, a lot of people still think that 
you know, the, the president world means nothing like what uh, this uh, popular uh, activist Ashia said. Let's listen to our guys. February yesterday said there will be no softening on how the government at the federal level is going to handle this situation. And he said there are ongoing measures at tackling the issues involving insurgents, bandits, and kidnappers. What do you make of that statement from the president? Uh, I think uh, what I make of this statement is absolutely nothing. We are used to a president whose words mean nothing. He says one thing and the opposite happens. And I think part of the things that we should be demanding as Nigerians is the fact that the president should come out and tell us what is going on. The media should sit down with the president and ask him what is the way forward. As a citizen, it's not our business to give the way forward. He was voted to to give the way forward. His salaries are being paid for him. His needs are being taken care of. The president isn't anywhere. You know something? You know, when the president first came in, they talked about the body language. What is the body language of the president today? The body language of Muhammad Buhari is, is it, it enables the, uh, the terrorists. They know that we have an ineffective president and commander in chief. We have an incompetent one. We have a clueless one who does not even bother about what is happening in the country. Yesterday, we buried seven military officers among them, the best that we have. The nation was in mourning and the president was a few minutes away from where they were getting and he didn't turn up. And what does that say to people? Even to anybody, even to the nation, it is high time we begin to make serious demands from the president and let him know that if he's not ready to do this, well, please he can live there, he can resign and go away. Enough of the abduction, enough of the killings, enough of the incompetence, enough of, enough of the clueless leadership. We are tired. We need good governance. All right, um, Madam Yusuf, I, I just plead that the use of your, your use of words where you say things like clueless now, and, and to the number one now, citizen. Now, let me come again. Share, will, share will let me come again. Those things are not insults. They are statements of facts. You can check this. When we say somebody is clueless, the person does absolutely nothing. And that's what I'm saying. I do not insult. And I will never, it's not even worthy of my insult. So let's be very factual. Those things are statements of fact, and they are not insults. And we should not be cowards in this country. We are all citizens. We are not slaves. Uh, that was, yeah, she said she was recently on the interview with the channels. And this is what Buari has to say about this, kidna- uh, this uh, recent kidnap. Our primary objective is to get all the school hostage safe, alive, and on hand. We have the capacity to deploy massive force against the bandits in the villages where they operate, but our limitation is the fear of heavy casualties of innocent villagers and hostage who might be used as human shield by these bandits. A hostage crisis is a complex situation that requires maximum patience in order to protect the victims from physical harm or even brutal dealt at the hands of the corporate uh, of the captured. Let bandit, kidnapper, and terrorists not entertain any illusion that they are among they are more powerful than the government. They shouldn't mistake our restraint for humanitarian goals of protecting innocent life as a weakness or a sign of fear or solution. Let me say this again. We will not succumb to blackmail by the bandits and criminals who target innocent school students in in the accept, in the expectation in the es, expectation of huge ransom payment. Well uh those words are constantly being used by the government. I think what people just need is change. See this whole tweet from President Muhammad Obari during the time, you know, these bandits were trying as much as possible during the time they kidnapped the cheap, the cheap orgas. This is what President Muhammad Obari sent that time. He said, how can 219 girls be missing in our country and our leaders appeared incapable of actions? During Gula Jonathan time, the cheap August 217 or 219. But now in this regime, more than 1,200 has been adopted.
come on man what are we doing and meanwhile our vice president the other day his whole focus is on cryptocurrency <laughs> our vice president the other day his own focus is on cryptocurrency i hear people will be like oh it's handicap that uh, he's afraid to speak i know he's afraid to speak that is why up to today with history with what i know about nigeria i know the only active vice president that we have ever had is Atiku Abubakar. That's why you see him and Buhari, uh, he, him himself, Atiku Abubakar and uh, Obasanjo, who was the president there, we are having serious issues because he speaks out. Why is Osimbajo afraid? The uh, NSAS activist, Reno, this is what he, she has to say about this whole kidnap saga. She said, I wonder if there will be a show of force in Zafara in case the bandit that kidnapped over 300 school girls, or is going to be Sheikh Gumi to rescue as usual. Help G prepare the ransom as usual. The Zafara girls will be rescued. Nigeria citizens should remain calm and stop exaggerating these things. God bless not Northern Nigeria. God bless Sheikh Gumi. God bless Buari. That what she wrote, <laughs> because that is their tactics. That is what they use. And uh, let's move over from uh, this old kidnapping. It's really depressing, honestly. You know, we wake up every day, and the next day we hear about Nigeria. Oh, this is also something happening. This is happening. This is happening. No good thing is coming out at all. You don't even hear uh, in Nigeria that yes, Nigeria has finally produced something that will be imported. So, 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 oh, honestly, man, it's really impressive, guys. Also, Sunday Boho, you know, the popular uh, Yoruba activist, well, he was recently almost cornered by the DSS and the police while he was on his way to visit somewhere or someone. But uh, thank God for him, the youth around stopped the arrest. He was almost little space small thing he was almost arrested and you know if he's arrested and taken to abuja uh oh yo it's his case but uh with the youth who were there were present they resisted all the attempt to arrest him and uh, he walked freely from the situation and uh, he, he actually contacted some few politicians like femi fanny coyote who broke this news to his follower this is what he said he said i just spoke to my brother sunday boho he told me there was a violent attempt to arrest him this afternoon that yesterday afternoon by a joint team of soldiers dss operative and policemen numbering about 40 on the badon lagos express way he was on his way to see Babahayo Adebajo in Lagos. I condemn this attempt to ambush and abduct him. It is not only risky but also very dangerous. If the security agency want to see him, all they need to do is to visit him, is to visit him to their office, is to invite him to their office. I am not aware of any crime that he has committed and I hold restraint on all sides. Let me also send a warning to the federal government that Sondebuhu is a hero to millions of Yorubas and either killing him or detaining him unlawfully will be the biggest mistake they could make. Building bridge, dialogue and peace is better than violence and war. A word is enough for the wise. That is coming from uh, Femi Fanny Coyote. You know, it seems like the federal government are trying their tactics to get this guy. Meanwhile, we are having so many, so many, many issues in this country, guys. Meanwhile, here is a very refreshing video. It shows that Kenya President Uhuru spotted walking along the street of Nairobi without security, without anybody. He was just walking along the street, just by himself. Well, I know Kenya is not can can't be compared to Nigeria because the economic and the security, all those kind of things. But uh, 
they make their environment very secure that is why you see him enjoying this freedom i bet you if uh president Muhammad Bari do the same thing i'm not sure he's going to make it back because of the security challenges who wrote and uh, he simply said pray for nigeria but honestly god has given us everything to succeed god has given us everything to succeed everything to tackle this whole thing but it's just the sluggishness of the of the government they are unwilling they are not doing anything to 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 even assist or try to calm everything down they are not able to see and meanwhile our new first lady asha Buari, is uh, the first lady of uae this was someone wrote concerning asha Buari. i must read this particular tweet so, sadly he said sadly mr asha Buari has separated from our husband general Buari retired sources tells me that she had it up to her throat and so fed up of being the mother of a nation she cannot protect she is the mother of uae now too sad the msm will never report this well guys uh, we already know our first uh, lady is not in nigeria anymore she has relocated she has relocated to uh dubai uae so maybe she's now the first lady there crazy crazy we have never seen this kind of things before in nigeria and that to end this video this is the kind of child that i am hoping not to have this is a girl whose boyfriend murdered her mother and because this her boyfriend apologized to her and they came back being in a relationship she is refusing to testify against this, the same guy. And this happening in South Africa, not in Nigeria. So, ah, thank God, it's not in Nigeria. This is what we call Prodiga Daughter. So, a lady refused to testify against her boyfriend who killed her mother after falling in love with her for the second time. The South Africa police has launched a manhunt for a Soweto woman who refused to show up in court to testify against a man who murdered her mother in 2019. Bali has reported her ex boyfriend to the police after he allegedly shot her and her mom during a fight. Her mom died on the spot. Why? The wounded Bali was taken to the hospital and recovered after a while the lady who in 2019 vowed to do all she can to get her ex-boyfriend behind bars for the crime was required by the law to testify against him in south uh, high court as witness to the crime after police arrested him same year however in a shocking twist of event bali's family now alleged that she got back with her ex boyfriend, with the same guy who was remanded in the custody to date. It's alleged that she has fallen in love with him again and cannot go further with the testifying in court. <laughs> this is the kind of children that I don't want to have. Oh God, don't give me this kind of child. And meanwhile, well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I know you guys might not enjoy this video because of uh, what is happening. I just talked about what is happening in Nigeria. It's really, really de depressing, but you no, know, we still have to talk about it. Not all the time we talk about celebrity, lifestyle, sex, relationship, or so on. But in my next video, guys, be expecting all those stuff. Be expecting it. Yes. I'm not going to talk about any politics at all. So, guys, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned. Bye.